think that one of the most important elements for changing the world just might be your address. <laughs> you see, the world is not lacking pioneers, world changers, from political leaders to activists to teachers, people who want to change the world and know exactly where they want it to be. But the problem is not where, the problem is how to get there. When you and I drive a car, we have a navigator. That's an internet AI-based tool. We type in the address, and it doesn't only show us where we're going, but it calculates the best route to get there. But when we look at the world of change, those are amazing people that raise money, resources, volunteers, but they don't even have a paper map. We are using 19th century methodologies and don't achieve the change we want to see. When we confronted that problem, we said, there must be a tool. And when we couldn't find one, we set out to build one. And if you allow me tonight, for a few minutes, I'll take you through our journey, how we've built a change navigator, how we came to see the world through data-driven glasses, and how we understood that in the heart of it all lies community. See, community, as I see it, it's, it's a pillar. It's this thing that binds individuals towards a single set of values, wants, and needs. It's what drives people to action. But what is a community in the 21st century? Once, uh, once it was easy, it was all about location. We lived in tribes, and our tribe was our community. We moved to farms, and our farm was our community. Industrial revolution happened, urbanization, we moved to the cities, and we've built new communities, the gentleman club, the workers' union. But in the last 20 years, the digital revolution happened, and the location moved online. Chat rooms, forums, social media, Facebook groups, we even have community managers as a profession. But if you and I are part of the same Facebook group, does that mean we have the same values? Do we really drive people to action with the like button? I think not. You see, I had a thesis. Although technology changed and the way we communicated has evolved, human nature stayed the same. And the thing that binds us to a community is still location, location, location. You see, it's not about the people we chat with, go to football matches with, or even spend time with. It's about the people we choose to surround ourselves physically, the people that live around us. And they just might reflect on our values, wants, and needs much more than anything else. They are our community, whether we are aware of it or not. Cool thesis, but we need to prove it. How do we do that? How can we show that those communities really reflect our actions? Is that such an action that proves that? I think that in a democratic society, we call it voting. <laughs> you see, when we vote, we literally take an action. We choose a ballot that represents what we want, what we need, and what are our set of values. So if we can show that those geographical communities reflect our voting, reflect our values, then we might prove the thesis and be one step closer to get a tool for change. So we started working. <laughs> we collected data. I'm talking about animated aggregated data. That's the ethical kind, not the one that spies on you, but the one that looks on broad terms, like cities, neighborhoods, schools. We took the state of Israel and divided it to 3,000 locations. In each one of those, about 2,000 people. We called them micro-communities. You see, in a city, it will be as big as a street or a city block. And in a village, it will be part of that village. Then, we were able to collect around 600 data points. That's called pieces of information on those locations. And average number of cars, social economical backgrounds, what kind of schools, and more and more and more. We were able to calculate and identify the, a way to build not only those pieces of information, but something to show us the structure of that micro-community. We call that the micro-community DNA. 
That's our way of representing what makes that community tick. And now, if we can show that those micro-community DNA, that research, can reflect on the actions, on the values, we did it. But before I'll tell you what we found out, let's play a game. <laughs> let's choose a single location. And I will ask you, what makes someone in that location vote left or right? But I will give you a single data point, a single piece of information that you think is the most important. What would that be? What do you think is the most important data point to understand whether someone voted left or right? Raise your hands. Don't be shy. Oh, money. Money. Money talks. <laughs> yes. Education, that's important. Ethnicity, you're calling me an Ashkenazi? <laughs> you see, all of those are important. Of course, we cannot only look at one. We need to calculate them all into a DNA. But what we found out shocked us. We found out that one of the most important data points is the median marriage age of a micro-community. That's the age that the people within the community decided to get married in. This is crazy. And it's crazy twice. First, I could never predict that. <laughs> and second, this is a communal data point in essence. You see, it's not about how much money you are making. And it's not about what car you're driving or what school your daughter goes to. It's about the decision the people around you made. And it reflects the most on you. You are part of that community. Now, we wanted to take it a step further. Can we not only understand the past, but can we predict the future? So, in the last election here in Israel, three months before election day, we cast a prediction. We took all the micro-communities and tried to predict how they would vote coming election day. And tonight, I want to share with you that we were able to predict for every micro-community the election results in an accuracy of 97.7%. It works! It's alive! But, but, the point was never prediction. The point is driving change. So how can we take what we've learned, how can we take this research and give those world changers a tool that will help them achieve the change they want to see in the world? That's why we've created the Change Navigator. The Change Navigator is a community data-driven tool that allowed world changers to plan, to understand how to allocate those volunteers, resources, money, and to understand how to achieve the change they want to see. First, it allows us to zoom in and understand the community we're working in. Let's zoom in into this community, the center of Tel Aviv, the metropolitan of Israel. On the surface, it looks amazing. Two parents, regularly, both of them are working, making great money. They have about 2.4 kids, <laughs> and each one of them has at least one bedroom. That's amazing. But if we look deeper, we can see that the average time people live in rent in this micro-community is over 15 years. This micro-community shouts housing crisis. And it's not only about understanding the single community. If we'll take a step backwards, we can actually start planning. Let's say we want to save the whales, get elected, or fight for vaccines. We need to understand what we want to research, but once we have it, we can actually plan our actions. We can look at the green areas and understand that that's where people who are most motivated and attuned to our values. That's where we raise volunteers. The yellow areas, on the other hand, that's where wealthy people live, but those people also understand my needs. That's where I raise money. And the red areas? The red areas are, on the one hand, the places where change needs to be the most, but on the other, those are people that were actually willing to listen. That's where we raise awareness. And so on, and so on, and so on. For the first time, we have a tool that allows us to plan a route for change, to actually achieve those goals and plan our resources in a better way. And it goes even deeper. 
In our research, we were able to find twin communities, meaning that you, who lives in a micro-community, you just might be closer in your values, wants, and needs to someone who lives in a micro-community in the north of Natania, the south of Gedera, the south of London, a specific street in Paris. And once we understand that, we can make you work together. We can bring people from different areas, different backgrounds, to work towards the same values. Take actions together. You see, my point here tonight was not to show you how cool a map is. We all know that. <laughs> and it's not to show you we can predict the future using data. My point here tonight was to show you that if we truly want to achieve change, we need to start working with technological tools. We need to look at the world with data-driven glasses to truly understand it. And we need to keep in mind that in the heart of it lies a community. My point here tonight is to tell you that if we will utilize global technology, we will drive local change. And if we will take local drive, we will change the global landscape. Thank you very much.